Raid review. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of Raid Review, where I take your raids and review them. It's pretty. It's a pretty simple concept, but I think we could have a lot of fun with this. So, for the very first episode of Raid Review, I have a short-ish raid. It's about nine minutes long on Shoreline from Cytoxity. And he said, a nice nate and an intense firefight outside of resort. Would love to get some insight about how I could have approached the fight better. I feel like I played it so wrong, uh, but didn't think in the moment how I could flank or get an advantage since he looked like a juicy boy. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive straight into this raid and we go and review it. And I'm going to try and give uh, give this gentleman uh, a little bit of advice, maybe let him know some stuff that he might have been able to do a little bit differently. Already, it looks to me like he is going in with an Adar. So, looks like an Adar. Uh, what armor is that? Is that a Redus armor? I think, maybe, and uh, a Ulac or the other one. The armor probably doesn't really oh. matter a whole ton. For not having a countdown and spawning me in late. I appreciate that so much. Okay, so first things first here. You're laid into the raid. First thing that goes, should go through your mind is where am I? Who could be near me? And how is this going to change how I play? If you get a late raid on Shoreline, the odds are a lot of people are going to get to the resort, obviously much quicker before you. What does this mean? This means that people are probably going to be posted up on the roof. This is probably going to mean people are going to be posted up in rooms. This is going to mean that a lot of the rooms that you're going to want to go and loot are probably already looted and people are chilling. They're waiting for PvP. Uh, the odds are lessened that you're going to run into anybody out in the open fields. It is still, of course, a possibility. Anything's a possibility at this point. But those are a few things that you should keep in mind. If you're going straight to the resort, your approach should probably be uh, be a little bit slower. So let's see how our boy... Oh, so he's scav hunting. So he's on task. Okay. Oh, he's doing the shotgun scav task. <laughs> God, I hate the tunnel extract. Do you guys know as well? Just a, just one little thing I'm going to interject here. Um, if you're in the resort and you realize that your extraction is either tunnel or road to customs, but also, you know, every time rock passage is always going to be open for you. Um, in most cases, instead of just even checking to see if rock passage is open, it would generally be quicker and usually safer to just go to either tunnel or go straight to road to customs. Um... I have noticed that people do like to camp the Rock Passage Extract. You've got the Sniper Scav there. He is incredibly accurate. You can run into Scavs. You can run into players chilling up on the rocks on the Rock Passage side of the resort. Uh, generally, if you have a lot of gear and you really, really, really want to survive, take the extra maybe, honestly, maybe 30 seconds to just run straight for one of the other extractions and just ignore Rock Passage entirely. <laughs> this is fun. I like this. This is good. This is a good time. And spawn you in late too. That's that's not a good idea. Yeah, late spawns suck. I I really hope point twelve kind of reduces the amount of late spawns. I think there's more late spawns now because there are just less people playing right now while they're waiting for point twelve. Because the snooper is up. We can do counter snooping. Okay, so he's checking for sniper scav. Probably not going to spawn in this early. He's not there. Yeah. Always good to check for him, though. Sniper Scav has a silly range. He easily has the potential to pop your stomach at the very start of a raid. So, you're right to be checking for Sniper Scav here. If he was there, he could have been killed already. Okay, I'm going to pause this real quick. Something I just want to talk about here as far as his weapon choice goes. I'm pretty sure he's using an ADAR. So, an ADAR, single shot rifle. You probably don't want to be taking CQB fights with the ADAR unless your point shooting is really, really good. Um, he does have the shotgun as a backup. It depends on how confident you are with the shotgun. But if you're going to be running an ADAR, range is your best friend. Taking ranged fights with the ADAR and just trying to go for those headshots every time is going to do you better than just attempting to get in, up in somebody's face and just click as fast as you can. Because the whole frame rate uh, tied to your FPS is still a thing. And... 
It's definitely not going to do you any good if you get into a fight, you get a lockup, they're on full auto, you're on single, you're just not going to be able to outshoot them. They will get more rounds down range than you will. That's just kind of how it goes. Unless it's a really good performing server, you've got a really good machine. Um, but just in most cases, you are, you know, if you're going to take CQB fights, you're better off having something automatic. That being said, of course, he has a shotgun as a secondary. Maybe he's planning on using that for close range as well, but we'll see. There's the 153. Okay, so coming through here, I know that this is a late raid, but uh, if I was coming from the direction he was coming from, I would be watching up here. I would be watching up top right here uh, because players that spawned along the wall, it's very, very common that they're going to run along that wall until they get to bunker and then they're going to pass by bunker, pass sniper rock and go into the resort that way. So already I would rather if he had checked top right here to make sure there were no players. Um, so that's just one little thing. How many scavs spawn here lately? This is another place where scavs used to spawn a lot, and the, every time I've played, they've just not appeared. He is right. Scavs do spawn in less, it seems like, these days. Unless you're on interchange. Okay, so it is an ADAR. Yeah, you lack and a redot. He's got good armor. He's got good armor for sure. Okay, so again here, uh, he never checked the angle on the right towards the big rock. Players can spawn there. I've often been caught by people coming from that direction. I would feel much better about this raid if he had just looked to his right. It's very little things that do help quite a bit. Um, I know when a lot of people watch me play, I play this game like an idiot. I'm not saying that I kind of, uh, I would impose that gameplay onto anybody else, or I would say the way that I play the game is right, whatever, you know, whatever way you enjoy playing the game. But this was submitted as, you know, you know, a, a raid review situation where I'm trying to give my best advice and try and sort of explain how I would do certain things. So already I'm seeing a lack of kind of checking angles. I know it's a late raid, but in a late raid, especially you want to be more careful of this kind of stuff. You can go around that way for when they get an L bus station tower then village. Okay, so that's good. He's already planning out where he wants to go to after he does certain things. So this is with regards to his, his uh, task. He's using contact, so I'm not really sure how to judge the range of these shots. That sounds like a scav shooting somebody, maybe. Okay, scoping this out. Again, you haven't looked to your right, you haven't checked your back. You're really exposing yourself to the right here and you haven't even checked the angle. I would, I would check that. He's kind of looking at it a little bit now, but... Again, you also haven't checked the roof. You haven't scanned across the third floor balconies that could be looking at you. You're also not looking in the third floor windows that people often peek out of. You need to be more aware of your angles, man. You need to be way more aware of your angles. That is true. He's just seen that guy. Okay. Slowly. Okay, he goes for the... Okay. So that guy, from what I could just see there, he just crouched. Um, what I would have done is I would have waited a little bit. He obviously didn't know you were there. You could maybe have just taken one shot and ended it all. But instead you threw a grenade. They can hear you pull the pin on the nade and they can potentially run. I feel like a nade here was kind of unnecessary. You could have just taken your time, lined up the shot on his head. It looked like he was maybe checking out something that was down the hill from him. Um, I don't feel like the nade was necessary here. But it worked out. You see, that guy had no idea he was there up until he heard the grenade. Up until he threw the grenade, that guy was clueless as to you being there. The grenade did work out for you, but also while you were walking up like that, you were also completely exposed to the dude. You could have used the rock for a little bit of cover until the nade exploded and then peeked out. He could very easily have just tapped you in the head there uh, if he found you a little bit quicker. Um, because, I don't know, I, I guess, well, he obviously knew where you were after the nade landed, so, because he did take shots at you. It only takes one bullet to put you out of the raid. Um, I would have played that a little bit slower. I would have watched what the guy would have done. Wait for him to stand still. 
take your shot with the ADAR. It's not like you're using a fully automatic weapon where you could just kind of spray around his head and guarantee the kill. I would have been more patient. Just given the gun that you're using, uh, that's what I would have done in this situation. Oh my god. Also, what you've done by throwing that grenade, uh, to me, every time I hear a grenade go off, I always think geared players. I always think money, these guys are geared. Because like, I don't know, I just never see ungeared people really take nades in with them. So what you've done now is you've drawn more attention to this part of the map, so you need to be more careful about what's going on around you. You could probably loot this guy really quickly, but I would really recommend repositioning as quick as you can. So let's see what he does. If you're here, please flip that. Holy shit. Nice nade kill, though. I'll, I'll give him that. Good nade kill. Oh, no. Okay, so he just had a nade with a rotor, so... I feel like if he had something maybe fully automatic... Holy he was a level 52. What a weird loadout for a level 52. It's very strange. Okay, so he swaps out the contacts of the swordens. It's fair enough. Oh, that'll help. Okay, so he takes the PKO6, puts it on his oh, 153. Jesus. There's some nades. Good shit. Oh my god, that was so good. I can't believe I got that. Okay, so he's not going to take his black rock. It's not really that big of a deal. That was amazing. Okay. Sight from a shotgun, it's gonna be easier <laughs> to aim for the head. I love this. Uh, he's so happy about finding this stuff. No, this is great. This is really fun. I wish I got excited about stuff like this. Holy shit. <laughs> this is great. Let me turn this up a little bit, maybe. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so something I'm just going to say real quick about this. You're hanging around this area a little bit too long. That's that's all I really have to say about this. I wouldn't be sitting here checking my tasks and kind of fiddling around with things. I would rather you had looted the guy and then maybe backed off somewhere else that wasn't as close to where the explosion went off. But let's carry on. You should have still counted for the other one, right? Yes. Good. Wait, could you move so I can maybe gum this? Oh, shit. No way that counted as a headshot, right? Oh, he's not using slugs? No. Oh, maybe. No, you want to get a little bit closer. If you had slugs, you probably could have headshot them. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Okay. Panic mode right now. You're being shot at from where? Figure out where he is. Probably the roof. Run, run, run. Or maybe not the roof. That maybe down at the... Uh... And you need to reposition oh, he's down at the bus station. Okay, so repositioning. You've got a nasty little spot here to kind of chill in. I probably wouldn't expect somebody to sit here. He's probably seen where you've gone, though. Yeet. Okay, throws a nade back. That's fair. You never know. You might get lucky. Oof. Okay, fixing his wounds. I'd be very careful about re-peeking this. I've picked up a lot of grenades. So First off, okay. That peek he just did there is a little bit scary. Um, whoever he's fighting just now, I'm pretty sure he was down the hill. Um, but there is also no way to be really 100% sure as to exactly where he was. That guy knows where you are, okay? He is very aware of you are. He's probably watching the road. He can't see if you've crossed. He just knows that you're up on the rocks somewhere. The way you re-peek that, um, he could easily have taken your head off. No issues. If I was you in that situation, what I would have done is what you're doing now. I would have immediately repositioned. I probably wouldn't have turned around to check and see where the guy was. So now you're repositioning. That's what I like to see. Good shit. Okay, healing up now that you have a little bit more cover. Maybe use your audio cues here. See if you can hear the guy at all. Hey, He's coming any closer to you. you. Very, very useful. Also, interesting binds. Nine and zero for his morphine and his IFAC. How does that work? Does he maybe use... Uh... Oh, maybe he uses his arrow keys. Maybe he's one of those players. That's interesting. I must ask him. I'm curious about that now. Okay. Again here. Um... I'm gonna... Okay. So already here, you can hear firing inside the resort. That could have been the dude that you were just fighting. You're also very, very exposed to the roof here, uh, which is something I just realized. So let's see how he plays this out. Yeah, definitely don't get a word in there. What the f*** happening? <laughs> I do have an Instagram. I do have a Snapchat. I do not have a Carabao. <laughs> 
Bro, you're missing out, dude. You gotta get on that chatterbait. Okay, you see the guy? Oh, no. Okay, not the worst thing taking the shots here. Nice nade to potentially push him back. Okay. Super juicy. You need yes, to run. Many, many gear. Okay, he's running. You're moving. No, this is not the play. This is not the play. Uh, please don't repeek him from this angle. He's gonna know you're on these rocks. He can probably hear you from here. So you're peeking, like, okay. You're peeking this angle. You're exposed to the roof. You're exposed to all of these. Everybody inside the resort just heard you shooting from here. If there was anybody on the roof right now, you'd be dead. If there was anybody in any of these third floor balconies, you'd be dead. If there was anybody in some of these second floor balconies, you'd be dead. This is, uh, this is not the place to take this fight. If I was you, I would have ran all the way to the right towards the helicopter. Maybe gotten, uh, gotten to the opposite side of the helicopter where the little gate is. And maybe just chill there and just watch across, directly across from the helicopter, below it, and see if the guy starts pushing into the resort that way. Uh, at least what that gives you is a little bit more cover, a little bit more peace of mind that you're not going to be shot from, you know, tons of different angles. There could be a guy down to your left from the uh, hydro station that might hear all this going on. He might be on his way up now and he can just have a free shot on you in the back. God, there's so many dudes here. What the okay. So you've come to the conclusion that there's a lot of people here, okay? First thing that should be going through your mind is that surviving this is more important than killing this guy here right now. If there's a lot of people in this raid, you can afford to avoid this fight, get into a better position, collect yourself, listen to what they're doing, and then move in, potentially. Because this guy has the info right now as to exactly where you are, pretty much. And also, all the people inside heard this going on. Do they care? Probably not. It sounds like there's a few people fighting in the resort. But if I was you, I would get the fuck out of here. I would get out of here. That guy is very geared. You have an ADAR. You have a 153. Your armor's pretty good, but you really need to hit, to hit your shots here if there's, uh, if there's any hope of winning this fight from where you are right now. Also, you don't have a close range optic on your ADAR. Um, so I hope you're very comfortable with your point shooting. If you were in a situation like this and you maybe had like a PK-06 or an RMR or something like that, it would be much easier for you to take this fight. It's an awkward range to fight out where it seems like point shooting here is probably not the play. And having something like maybe even a hammer scope with a, uh, a delta point on top of it could really help you here. And my socials are all the same. There you go. Shit. Okay, so now you've been flashed. Run. He knows you're here. He knows exactly where you are. He can probably hear you running. So let's see what he does. Falls all the way back to the rock. Probably not the most predictable place you could sit. Um, you can hear him running. What's your next play? You're playing this pretty well so far. You fall him back. You're listening. You're chilling. Now what are you going to do? Pushing on your right. Shit, he caught me. Mmm, damn. Unlucky, man. That, that, that you... That wasn't a bad oh, fight. I mad. That was actually a pretty cool fight. Yeah, no, I agree. That was a good fight. That was a good fight. Fear him. Holy crap. Okay. So Knee help is counting. Let's have a quick look here. Let's let's uh let's maybe slow this oh, down and see the uh see the killing blow here. So where is it? It's right about here. So let's slow this down a little bit to maybe 0.5. And let's see what exactly happened here. So you heard the guy on your right, you stand up, you turn to your right, you go to peek him, he spots you. Shit. And goddamn <laughs> Honestly, man, that guy just destroyed your face. That was uh, that was a really, really nice shot by that guy. Okay, so let's quickly uh, let's quickly talk about a couple of things that you could have potentially maybe done better in this situation. So, if I was you here, I would one hundred percent have fallen back a bit further. If you're using a setup like that, you want to be medium to long range fighting people, uh, specifically with the ADAR, like one hundred percent. If you had a fully automatic gun. You could definitely have a little bit more confidence in taking these fights. But with the ADAR, with the scope that you had, 
taking a fight that, that was that close range, like maybe maybe the play there was to fall back far enough, maybe even further beyond where you fell back to, and maybe just stay scoped up on the spot. That guy seemed to sort of blindly run down that hill. If you had stood up maybe a couple of seconds earlier, you might have spotted him a bit sooner and you could have been able to maybe take his head off. But that isn't what happened. <laughs> so when you're running guns like that, distance is your friend. You want to you wanna make sure to keep your distance. I often do the same thing when I'm running like SA-58s or um, Veppers with BPs. I like to keep my distance. I don't really like to get up in people's faces. Not necessarily, you know, like you didn't you didn't necessarily have a choice in this situation. You kind of um you kind of fell back, you sort of stuck to your spot, and he just he just got a really nice shot on your head there. Uh let's be fair. It was a nice shot by the guy. But what I would have done here, I would 100 percent have fallen back a decent bit. You saw that the guy was quite geared. I don't know what kind of ammo you were running. If you're running M995s, then you know you had that in the bag, just one shot to his head, he probably would have been dead. You want to use your distance here. You want to use range. You want to space yourself uh, as much as you can away from the guy. And even if you come across a guy in Tarkov and he sees you and, you know, he's chasing you down or whatever, there's always ways to just get away from the guy. There was a lot of downtime spent where that guy was probably searching for you. You could have just ran away. You don't have to take every fight that you find in Tarkov. And I feel like that's something that catches a lot of people. Um, not every fight has to be taken. Not every fight can be won as well like that's that's another thing you are going to die you know things just aren't going to work out i think this was a case of you played it fairly well um there wasn't really a lot to complain about here um but what i would have said or what i would say is that if you had just maybe taken a little bit more distance you probably could have taken the fight uh much better at range and while he was running down the hill towards you i'm honestly kind of surprised the dude ran towards you like that that was a pretty confident move by the guy you weren't wearing shit gear like you were you were pretty well geared i don't know if he maybe caught a look at your gun like realized it was a semi modded ish m4 or adar it would have been pretty hard to spot by the guy i'd imagine but like that guy's that guy's got some stones for running at you the way he did but um all in all there were a couple of things as i said your awareness the way you looked around the way you swept the map while you were walking through it some of the things you did while you were looting uh, especially when the nade went off and you weren't worrying about, you know, just grabbing the gear and immediately repositioning. That's something that could get you caught. You need to be watching the rooftops. You need to be watching the windows. If you are fighting around the resort, the roof and the windows are somewhere you're going to get Juan from and then wonder what happened. It's just going to happen. It's happened to me a million times and I'm not aware of it. I've seen it happen to other people. I have done it to people. I have seen people fighting down exactly where you are and I'm just up on the roof like, you know, Two, three easy kills uh, just because they have no idea where I am. They weren't paying attention to the roof. They weren't watching their cover. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the only thing I have to say about that final fight just there would be to uh, reposition a little bit more. Distance is your friend when you're running a setup like that. And uh, other than that, that's about it, man. I hope that uh, I hope you found this helpful. I hope that the people who are watching maybe found this a little bit helpful, maybe a little bit insightful as to how maybe I think and, you know, pay attention to these. I didn't want to edit these because I wanted it to just be what I'm thinking as you're playing. I wanted this to be very just straight out the box. This is what I would do in this situation every time. I didn't want to go back over and edit certain parts of the raid and, you know, like cut and talk about, you know, different things I do or whatever. Because when you're playing a game like Tarkov, it's all down to instinct and it's all down to how, you know, your mind works. Like there's there's could be like 10 other people that commentate over this exact same rate and they might have a completely different opinion than I do as to how you should have played it. But um, yeah, Cytoxity, thank you very much for sending me in the raid. I will leave a link to his Twitch and his Twitter down in the description. If you guys want to go drop him a follow, I'd appreciate that since he did provide the footage to me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys would like to see more raid reviews in the future or you would like to see your raid be reviewed, join my Discord. Uh, there is a section in there called Raid Review. All you've got to do is copy and paste your Twitch link to the VOD or a YouTube link into that section of my Discord. I'll check it out. And if I want to do a review of it, I will. Um, also, I do not accept Dropbox links. Please do not send me Dropbox links. They'll be deleted. Uh, there's too much shady shit that can happen with drop Dropbox links. So I will take YouTube links and I will take Twitch links, Twitch VOD links or highlight links or whatever like that. So guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this new series. Uh, this was actually a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed uh, making this video right now. Um, if you guys want to see more in the future, if you guys enjoyed the video, please subscribe and hit the old thumbs, bu thumbs up button. I would appreciate it. And if you guys had any uh, opinions, 
or maybe how you would have played it, leave a comment below. But guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.